go ahead and go ahead and start sending them now. Boom! There he is, the man of the hour. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Now I have to give an official an official introduction now. <laughs> I won't go down the dossier. I won't go down the accolades and the awards. I'm just going to simply say the man whose voice they say sounds like a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Brian McKnight to Magic Live. Hi, B. Thank you. I'm good. I hey, I feel like I'm I great. Should, I, could, I should say B. Yeah, B oh. is fine. B is fine. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. So good to get some new music from you. Let me thank say you. thank you for putting this body of work out. Oh, thank you for, for having me. This is uh, different than normal, but it's really good because normally... I'd have to travel to all of these stations. I can hit them all in one day and do everything I need to do. It's, it's from in the that comfort sense, of your home. Better. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to do it. You know, it'd be all you know on the radio. So this is it's yeah. it's a new way. I'm sure this this may be the way we do it from now on. I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, it's it's great. I believe so. Now I can't say that I won't. I I do not want to travel, and I know that's something on your list in life these days. Yeah, lots and lots of travel. Yes. Um, now you guys, you know, you and your wife had gotten on you guys' journey around the world. What was yeah. the last place you visited before COVID hit? Oh man, you know, it was right, the last shows I had done were right after Valentine's Day. That's usually a very busy week for us. Mm -hmm. And we had done Vegas and then we had done a couple others. You know, it's been so long, I don't even remember which shows they were. Right. But we had so many plans this year to travel. Normally the first week of May we're in Australia at Hamilton Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, that didn't happen this year. Um, but, you know, we also have had an opportunity to have family dinner every night. See? Um, the kids were home, mom and, mom and dad were here, and the six of us would sit every night. You know, we'd have a different menu, you know, a different person would do dinner every night. I, I cooked dinner three or four times, it was great. You know, I so we're it. making, we have made the best of the time that we've had. And I had my birthday over that time and only yeah, the folks right. that meant the most to me were there. And it was great. It was the best birthday I'd ever had. So, you know, our lives haven't changed that much. I haven't done a show and we haven't traveled. But other than that, uh, I think my body needed the rest. I haven't, yeah. I've been doing shows nonstop for 25 years. And this is the longest I've gone without doing a full concert. So when I did that thing Friday night, yeah. for uh, Keith Sweat's thing. It was the first time I'd done it. I, I was, for the first time in my life, not nervous, but a little anxious to see mm -hmm. how, you know, I was going to hold up. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like if you don't go to the gym for several months that first time back, yeah. you know, you yeah. might be sore. You might be mm -hmm. a little less than what you're trying to do. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm Wonderful. ready to get back to work a little bit, though. <laughs> well, listen, you have something to get back to work and do. This new body of yes. work, if you guys hadn't heard about it, last Friday, he dropped the album Exodus. Yes. Now listen, Brian, I wasn't a believer. When I was scrolling, you know, you're minding your business, scrolling on your Instagram page or your Facebook, and I saw something come down my feed and it said, Brian McKnight says it's his last album, he's gonna retire. I kept scrolling, I was like, Psh. Okay, so <laughs> that's, that's not what it said. It said it's Brian McKnight's last album of original music. I'm not retiring. I'm still going to do you. shows. I'm still going to be around. I just, I just may not release new music. And uh, I think that's where there's sort of a disconnect. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 this pandemic has shown me that, you know, I, I just want to get up every day and do whatever makes me happy. Yeah. And whatever makes me happy is making my wife happy. And it's not that my wife is telling me to stop. It's just what I want to do. My mm -hmm. focus is no longer Brian, 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 Brian. It's Leilani, Leilani, Leilani. And that's all I want to do. And I think that we, after, I think it was great 2020. I released my 20th album and that's the last one. I think it's a nice round number. I think it is a perfect run. And this is what I love. I love that you said this is your best album. Um, and you have plenty of albums and records to contend with. But I love the fact that you said this one means something to you. Yeah, these last three, Better, Genesis, and Exodus are all mirror images of one another because every single song I've written since Leilani and I met have been about her and about <laughs> our love. Uh, listen, I know people love Back at One and they love Anytime and all those songs, but those mm -hmm. songs weren't based on anything. I never mm -hmm. had somebody. I never liked anybody. Um, that, that was all sort of my imagination. I watch a movie and that was a song or mm -hmm. somebody would relay a story of theirs to me and that would be a song. You know, everything that I've done since we met has been you know, directly proportional to the way that I feel about this woman who was the most beautiful, most incredible woman that I've ever met or seen 
in my life. And <laughs> it, is, it, is, it has changed my perspective on everything. I was selfish. I was like every other man that's out there. I, I only did what I thought um, was about Brian. And now, I, since we've met, it's been all about Leilani. Tell me this, <laughs> pre-Brian, pre-this Brian we're looking at right now, right. what would you say was, what was the hardest for the man to give up? His money, his time, or his car? Time is always going to be the hardest thing to give up. Um, you have a song, it's, I love it's, it. It's the only thing you can't get back. Yeah. That's why I say, you know, if somebody would have told me that Leilani was coming when I was 42, I would have been a virgin. I wouldn't have ever kissed anybody. I would have never done anything. And that's what nobody's talking about. You know, I had three and a half minutes to write this song, which is it's the best song I've ever written by far. Wow. Um, but there were some things that I, I couldn't put in there because I just didn't have the time to. And it's that it's not that just that I'm not going to touch anybody or, or hold someone's hands or kiss anybody. I'm not going to look at anybody. I'm not going to think about anybody. Everything that's me is now yours and has been since the day we've been together. So, Amazing. Yeah. I love that it's so mutual. Like, you see bliss on your face, Brian. You see <laughs> pure bliss. And I love it because it's matched. You know, they yes. say the worst thing is to marry someone and be unequally yoked or be right. at two different places in a yes. season. But it seems like you guys have come together and truly given each other exactly what you need. It's a beautiful thing to see it on your face. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's what I want to tell people, that they, they see it in me, and it's only in me because it's being reflected back to me by my wife because mm -hmm. we feel exactly the same uh, in the same moment. And mm -hmm. it's been that way. People talk about a honeymoon phase or whatever. That's our life every day. We are together every second of every day and it is the greatest thing you can possibly imagine. We only let you in in a little peek, a little mm -hmm. peek of our life. But, mm -hmm. but I'm here to tell you that when people meet us, they're like, wow, you guys are just like you are on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, that's what we are. <laughs> you guys match in real life. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that you said, and I want you to talk about this a little bit, because it was kind of hard for me to believe it when you said it. Like you said before this album, you were in a place and a space where you felt like people didn't appreciate you and not on, let alone you. They didn't really appreciate this genre of music. music. So, um, well, I think that's been happening for a while. It wasn't necessarily before this album. It's mm -hmm. the way I felt, you know, in this business, I think you get 10 good years where you can be at, at the top of your game. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually from about 21 to maybe 31, 32 at, at, at the most. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's because your audience at that point has less things that they're doing. They're not married yet. They don't have kids yet. Mm -hmm. They haven't figured out what the priorities of their life are. Mm -hmm. And right about the time you're in your 30s, that's when all of the people that have loved you now, they got diapers. They got yeah. somebody yeah. to do. You know, the, the concert <laughs> isn't the number one priority in their lives anymore. Right. And then all of a sudden you're 40 and you realize that, you know, times have changed and things have changed mm -hmm. and, you know, where, where your fans' priorities are. And it's not that they didn't appreciate it, but you have to understand when you go from you know, you have this upward rise and you, mm -hmm. then you're playing stadiums and then that begins to come down and then you sort of settle at some place. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen now since I met my wife, that there is a resurgence. Yes. Of, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that that music wasn't based on anything. <laughs> to you, to you. Let's be fair and say to you because you're know you a great actor yeah. in that state, because that sense, because to everyone else, it is some of the best music of their lives. It is the soundtrack to that coming of age and what they truly felt deeply. So great actor, right. but I'm glad you have it now for you. You did it for everyone yes. else. Now you have yes. it for you. Well, that's what I did. I, when, I, when I wrote songs before, they were for everybody else. These ones are mine. They're Leilani's. And if you can relate to them, fantastic. If not, that's okay too. You can come along with our love story as well. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I love this boldness in where you are with where you are, right? You're not worrying about what family thinks of where you are, where fans think of where you are. You're solely right. concerned right now about truly taking stock of where you are and the person who's allowing you to reach that point and be in that space. You're taking stock of what you're giving. Like, was it hard for you to get to that point or were you always bold and saying, no, I'm not, I don't care about what y'all think. I care about you. I will always care about you, speaking of family and friends, but she's the most important thing in my life right now. Is that, was that a hard thing for you? Not at all. And I think you'd have to meet my wife to know her that I'm not the only one that feels this way. 
-hmm. You know, there have been so many times when, you know, at my shows, they'll meet Leilani and they'll say, you know what, you're nothing like what I thought. You're the sweetest, most wonderful person. That we, we never thought that you'd be this way. She has a, gregar a, natural, a natural gregariousness to her that people just want to be around her. People want to yeah. tell her the, their <laughs> deepest, darkest secrets when they don't even know her because she has that way. Maybe it's because, you know, she's a doctor or, or yeah. there's some part of that that she has that manner about her. But mm -hmm. I see it and I marvel at it because that's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Now, just, were you this at home, your home life, let's say before Leilani, do you feel like just as a man, there's some things that um, I, I take it back to a Blackstreet song. He said, make me a happy home. You know, we can do all these other things, material things. We can go to all these, of these places. But the home you create for a man is very important. Do you think um, that's also part of it? That is part of it. You know, our home is what it is and as warm as it is because she's the one that's made it. You know, my, I always wanted my house to be cold and like a museum and you can't touch anything. But here in our home, because of Leilani, you know, she she is the the sunlight that that everybody breathes in here. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's truly amazing to see. She I could I could just talk about her all day because she's my heart. She's she's what beats inside of me. Wow. And you guys can see that reflection in the album. There's a track titled Leilani. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of my favorites on the album. Thank you. I, I felt like I could picture you and Leilani having this drink, this grown up <laughs> drink, uh, 42. <laughs> like, I love the way you played the album with talking about even just meeting how you guys met, um, the right. pursuit. Although it seemed yeah. like a, a quiet pursuit. Something tells me you were not quiet about this pursuit. You no, were in hot pursuit. I wasn't at all. You know, and you're talking about bad. It was it was mm -hmm. comical the way I, I put it, but it was it was painful to <laughs> painful to know you wanted somebody so badly and she was like, Yeah, no, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do. I'm gonna get to know you and then I'll make my decision whether we'll be more than friends. Because right now we're just friends. I'm like, just friends? Take it. <laughs> what <Yeah>. do you mean? <laughs> you know, but you know, I was willing to do whatever it took to, to just be in her presence and you know Did that I, make I you pursue more because she did that? But because she said, You're gonna get to know me. Did that make you want to pursue her even more? I don't think she could have said anything in the world I would have pursued her this hard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. it. She did, there didn't need to be any more coaxing. I love yeah. it. It's it's truly a beautiful thing to watch. Thank um, you. True Bliss, um, the album, guys, again, it's already out. Exodus. Let me say, you look grown man. Yes. I love the season <laughs> that you're in. The Thank grown you. man is right. Happy belated 50th. I saw that you had a wonderful celebration for your 50th. Yes. Um, yes. And just experiencing life. I know a lot of people are at home right now for COVID and they've had to rediscover the people that they're married to, right? Because the world gets... <laughs> Don't laugh, Brian. It's a real thing. Or they've, or they've undiscovered them one way or the other. That's, that's what, you know, the best way to know how you feel about somebody is spend every minute with them and you'll know exactly. And all it's done has made us love each other more. You know, we, if that was even possible every day, I don't think it's possible to be more in love. And it is because every day I am. Looking at you guys, I don't believe in the couple goals thing. I, I, I loathe seeing hashtags <laughs> under somebody. I do send it under somebody's tag. I'm like, why are you setting your sights on that? But when I look at you guys, what I do feel is like, wow, I want to know what that feels like. Not that I want to yeah. do what they do, but I want to feel that on the inside. Like, um, it's beautiful. And I think that's what, that's what we take it as when people say that to us. I, I don't think it's possible to have what we have, mm -hmm. but it's possible to have a semblance of what we have your way. Mm -hmm. It's your way. It's what's going to make you happy. I'm happy because I'm making her happy and she's happy because she's making me happy. And that's mm -hmm. the difference between loving somebody and being in love with them. That's why when you see us talk about it, I, we don't say I love you. We mm -hmm. say I'm in love with you because I am in love with you, Leilani. I am with every fiber of my being. I am. Nice. <laughs> what is Brianized? So Brianized is basically the way I redo a song my way. Okay. So if I'm doing someone else, whether it's Whitney Houston or James Ingram or Stevie Wonder, I'm taking, instead of doing it exactly the way they did it, I'm doing it Brian's way. So I'm doing a little bit like them, but then putting my own little spin on it. What's the, do you have a signature that you say, this is Brian Eyes? Like, is it a, a special run or is it a, a what is? Nah, it's the way, it's more about the way I play it, the arrangement itself. 
of course I'm going to sing it my way, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take liberties with the way the chord changes are and I'll, I'll reharm, reharmonize everything so that it just fits the way Brian would do it. <laughs> now, you, your voice is incredible, but I'm a fan you. of your writing above anything else. Uh -huh. So who Thank would you. you say when it comes to, I know you came up um, in a time when Smokey was writing or, you know, who would you say was a standard for how you write, how you over the years have, you know, brought yourself into the skill of writing? You know, there are just... there's so many people because for me, it's always about the writers. There's some great singers and don't get me wrong. There are great singers in the world, mm -hmm. but they'd have nothing to sing without the songs right. that they sing. So it goes back as far as, you know, Burt Backrack and, and the Isley Brothers and all the way up and through Steely Dan and Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye and Kenny Loggins and the Dewey Brothers and Billy Joel. If you listen to My Baby, that's just, that's just Billy Joel on guitar, basically, yeah. um, with Leilani being the subject. And then, you know, I'm influenced by everything. I, everything I've ever heard is recorded in my head. So I'm, it, yeah. I'm a product of, of, of my musical environment. Mm -hmm. But I grew up listening and wanting to play jazz. So it's Miles Davis and it's yeah. Duke Ellington and, you know, Hoagy Carmichael. And there's so many thoughts musically going through my head. And then the, the problem is how do I fit that into a pop R&B genre mm -hmm. so every now and then you'll hear something that's kind of jazzy and then it goes straight right down the middle mm -hmm. and then you know I, I had to figure out how to walk that fine line yeah you i'm gonna say this you you managed to give us everything we love about brian before in this album you still gave us the essence of brian but i know it's all for you <laughs> everything was for you and about <laughs> you um i promised the listeners that i would ask some of their questions so okay. i'm gonna go to this question box real quickly and you okay. see, you should see if float below it for you as well. Okay. You guys could send more questions below. Let's go with this one first. I love, I like this one. Now I'm old school, Brian. Back in the day, I don't know if you guys are hip hop heads, but you were on an ill Al scratch. <laughs> if you don't wanna, don't waste my time. Yeah. I'll take her. Yeah, those are my guys. You know, yeah. I, I didn't do a lot of that, but that, I really loved how that song reminded me of of some really deep Marvin Gaye when I heard the track. And they, they were asking me to do it. And most, most of the reason why you haven't heard me do it a lot, because nobody asks me. If there's really? somebody out there that wants me to sing on their hook, just ask me. You never know. I might just say yes. <laughs> Brian is doing hooks, you guys. And he may just do a virtual wedding for you. If you're doing it, <laughs> pray that he'll do a virtual wedding for you. Right. Let's see real quickly. Brian, do you still, wait, okay, well, we know that. Now, he, you kind of answered this when you said you wanted to do jazz before. They were asking, would you consider doing a jazz EP? Uh, he said this know, is the last. I think as far as doing an actual jazz record, I'm not sure that I would do that. That's why I've tried to do a little of that on every record, just to, to let you know I can. If you come see me live, you'll see us do some of that during, um, during the shows, but I'm not sure about an entire jazz EP. Not sure. Okay, B. Sanchez is asking, who arranges your music? You mentioned a little before about how you Brianize yeah. things. So from record one, 90% of everything you hear is being written by me, mm -hmm. played by me, arranged by me, produced by me, and sung by me. Now, there have been other people I've worked with, too, but for the most part, it's, it's just me up, upstairs in this little room by myself. Mm-hmm. This next one, I know you built that basketball court at home for COVID. <laughs> and we know you've played on your teams. You've gotten your championships and all of right. that. Um, this question from True Blues Guy. What are your thoughts on the restart of the NBA season? Whew. With all the disinformation out there, what I just want is for all the guys to be as safe as they can be. Mm -hmm. um, seeing the amount of money that the NBA is spending to make this happen, to make it happen, and how much they're losing every day, it's probably economic they don't necessarily yeah. have to mm -hmm. i just want all my guys all the guys i know even the, the young guys that i don't know just just to be safe because we don't know we just mm -hmm. don't know what this thing is we don't know how how it's actually affecting us so mm -hmm. you know we'll see. we'll see i'm looking forward to seeing basketball though if that's the question <laughs> and getting back to to playing some yourself i'm sure uh, well, I, I'm fine here playing at the house right now. I, I, my shot's still working. It's still, it's still good, so we'll see. Now, I saw you on the golf course as well. Do you have um, an area in the back of your home where you golf? Uh, yeah, the entire golf course <laughs> because we live, we live in a country club. I so figured, right so. I, I figured. <laughs> Another question real quick. 
I'll take, oh, it disappeared. The one I wanted to ask. Oh, wow. Well, this is good. If you could be in any R&B group, who would it be? And my other question to that, did you ever, were you ever jealous of your brother's take six group? No, <laughs> I was never jealous. I don't work well with others like that. And I don't like splitting things six ways. So I, I was going to be solo from day one. Uh, if I could be in any R&B group, I'd probably be in Boys to Men because those guys are like my brothers. If I was going to be in a group, there's no better group to be in than that one. Nice. I concur. Um, <laughs> I love on the, <laughs> on the back of your album, uh, Leilani posted the back because she loved it the day the album dropped. Right. And I thought it was so funny when you, you gave props to your band and you just acknowledged right. that the fact that none of this happens without their, their backing in a sense. I right. thought it was hilarious that you thank them for putting up with you because you're not the nicest all the time. I thought that was so real and raw because you, you well, really want the best production for your fans. It's not even about um, anything, but I thought it was so funny that you put that on there. Well, because there's a right way, there's a wrong way, and then there's my way, and you got to do it my way. And <laughs> these guys conform every day. I may come in to sound check with a whole new arrangement. They got to learn it for that night, mistake free, and they oh, wow. run with it, you know. And they're used to me now. A lot of these guys have been with me for decades, so they understand that. But yeah, I wanted to acknowledge that. Plus, on this particular record, we we played a lot of things live. We went in the mm -hmm. studio as a band and played. And, you know, they were right there with me every step of the way. So I have to thank them always, always. And you can totally hear it. I, that's another thing that I appreciate about this album. You can hear the live instrumentation. Like, you right. do not compromise when it comes to that. Hence why I, I know we throw the legendary word around a lot these days and the word goat. How does that feel when you hear those? Oh, I think it's silly. <laughs> <laughs> He's a goat. I do. There, there are too many people that came before me mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be this way had they not been there. So there's no way that I could be that. I do appreciate that people think that because every generation has their goat. Mm -hmm. I think that's the same thing that LeBron is going through when they talk about Mike. Mike will always be the goat to me, but I do understand their argument because they weren't around to see him play. Mm -hmm. Now, the last dance should make you understand that there's, there's really nothing to talk about. We come back but to the last I do dance. understand it. So I take the same thing, you know, all I ever ask and, and hope for is that there's, there's a song of mine that I've written that there's, that somebody likes. And if that's the case, then I'm fine. Love it. I love it. You guys are going to love the album. Please go get it, stream it wherever you like. It's everywhere you are. Real quickly, what do you think? Of, are you okay with being on social media? You seem to, you and Papa seem to be handling <laughs> it just well. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. One day we're going to be successful enough so that we don't have to be. And I'm going to leave it at that. I enjoy it. I <laughs> like that answer. I love it. In the meantime, I know you guys will be that successful and don't have to, but I still want Leilani to put out that cookbook. How about that? Can you give her oh. that message? Tell her, come. is oh. she next to you? Have her come on over. We got to talk about this cookbook. Have her come on over, Brian, real quick. I definitely want to no ask her. No way. No way. You're not putting me in that one. <laughs> no, she has to do the cookbook. You have to, just like they encouraged you to do this album because they felt that it was that important for you to put out this body of work. True. That did the family true. support? And listen, I'm, I'm nudging her every day. Every day I'm nudging her about this cookbook because let me tell you something. This woman could cook. Jack. I bet. She can, she, man, my, my, she, let me put it this way. It, she makes everything on me feel good like that. Everything. My stomach, my, anyway, we don't have to go over all the ways. But listen. <laughs> Yeah. Outside of that cookbook, on the flip side, we're going to have a grown woman book because she's going to have to get some tips on this, this feel good from head to toe tips that oh, yeah. some of us yes. may not be hitting. So listen, tell Leilani, we're going to come back to her. Okay. I will tell her. <laughs> Thank you again for your time. We appreciate Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, again, go get the album Exodus. You will not be disappointed. It's wonderful. Thank you again, Brian. We'll Thank see you, you when Thank we get to see you again. All right. Bye-bye.